Today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Wildfire Marine takes on bringing a classic 25-foot Mako back to life. So it's going to be kind of a kind of a short, quick, um, not really a full restoration, but a pretty common thing when people want to put a bracket on a boat, replace the transom, fill it in, and uh, and go from there. Two Rivers Boatworks puts the finishing touches on the 34-foot venture project. The boat looks amazing, and I'm sure it's going to blow the socks off the people in New Jersey. And. George Labonte meets with Bob Martinez for a day aboard his fully restored 23-foot hoog. This was the first time he's had the opportunity to take a boat that he really wanted and customize it to his own liking. He did a great job with the boat, and he's got exactly the boat he wanted. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over the top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. We got a uh, 25 foot Mako come in here. Uh, Brian had had some issues with his boat, had some work done to it, wasn't happy with it. Um, so he brought the boat up here and we looked at it. Um, basically his transom is, is, is shot. Uh, it's nowhere near strong enough to hold a new 300 that he put on it. And so we went over to the boat with him. So it's gonna be kind of, a, kind of a short, quick, not really a full restoration, but a pretty common thing when people wanna put a bracket on a boat, replace the transom, fill it in, and, uh, and go from there. So after the hurricane, uh, we realized that the uh, transom is rot. It needs okay. to be completely redone. All right. I was thinking maybe we can close off the transom, center a live well in there if we can. Yeah. Add some trim tabs would be good. Maybe, maybe we could do something about this floor. The way it was done before, it's just not stable. Yeah, <clears throat> we would probably cut this out up to where you have a good solid floor. Cut out the whole back section here and gut all the wood out of it. Uh, there'll just be the fiberglass skin left on it. And we'll put the new transom will come all the way up to the top solid. And then we'll go ahead and build the cap that, that matches the, uh, uh, with the live well to match this up. Now the live well insert that we put in, do you want to go flush with this to keep it uniform or do you, do you want to have the extra space inside and step it back? Yeah, I'd like the extra space, you know, for fishing and okay. whatnot. It'd be good for the kids to hop over, you know, get on the Armstrong bracket. Okay. Obviously, install the Armstrong bracket, install yeah. the 300 Suzuki that I got repowered two years ago. Okay. In addition to that, there's there's some hurricane damage on this side, right here. If we could possibly maybe uh, okay. get that repaired. Um, there's a couple other gouge marks up at the top of the bow. Okay. Obviously, uh, repaint the uh, the boat okay. all the way down. And if we could look at possibly doing a you know, doing, redoing the canvas, the hurricane ripped into the canvas. Okay. I don't know if you have, still have the old rub rail, but the new one, you know, it won't fit. Obviously, we're gonna fill this in, so. Right, we'll yeah. Have to... I don't have the rub rail, um, unfortunately. It, okay. Most of it, I guess, came off or was damaged during the hurricane. All right. Down on the Keys. So, um, so we, we definitely need a new rub rail, for sure. One of the reasons Brian's really interested in keeping this boat, the boat has been in the family for years, since it was new, I believe. So he wants to really keep the boat you know, in the family, and he'd like to restore it, so he'd like to take his grandfather back out. His grandfather's gonna be 90 soon, and uh, so he really wants to surprise him with the new changes to the boat, and actually see what he thinks about, you know, the boat from what it originally was when he owned it. This boat's been passed down generation to generation. Um, started with my uh, great-great-uncle, passed it down to my grandfather. My grandfather, when he had a stage, was diagnosed with stage four cancer, signed the boat over to me. I uh, pulled it out of the water, um, started uh, repairing it. It needed some serious repair. It took several years, got it all done up. Um, he actually beat stage four cancer, got him back on the water. We fished, uh, which is a great memory. And then uh, soon after that, the hurricane came and hit the Keys. And um, now I'm redoing the boat all over again. Found out the transom was uh, um, compromised. So I'm gonna have to redo the transom. So I figured we'd close off the transom and put a uh, live well in there. and. Got an Armstrong bracket from Armstrong. Two years ago, I also uh, repowered with a 300 uh, horsepower Suzuki four-stroke. 
beautiful engine, and I'm just uh, looking to redo the boat and pass on the boat to uh, the next generation, and as long as the boat will survive. Now, the first thing we did on the boat is uh, actually my wife Debbie went out there and, and started cutting everything out of there. Once Debbie had everything all stripped out of the transom, she went ahead, went out there with some cardboard, and she makes a template of the transom. Once she makes that template, she brought it inside. We went ahead and cut the two layers of marine plywood, and then we install it the way we, we normally do. We hoist it up and, and set it into the boat uh, and bond it to the transom, again, with, with aluminum strips that we use to uh, through bolt to the transom so we have a nice straight transom. We're in kind of a hurry on this boat because uh, uh, Brian informed me that his grandfather is going to be turned 90 and uh, they're having a big get together down the Keys. The entire family is going to be there so we really want to bring the boat down there so we're kind of in a big push on this. We want to get it done so he can get down there with the whole family and kind of surprise his grandfather. When we come back, the team at Two Rivers Boatworks aims to complete the 34-foot venture project. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boatworks are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join the team at Two Rivers Boatworks as they put the finishing touches on the 34-foot venture project. So at Two Rivers Boatworks, we got this um, 34 venture in and we got it in to do a custom paint job on the motors and a hull side paint. Um, so where we've got up to is we got the boat prepped, we got it primed, we've got it painted, got the clear coat on, we've put bootstraps on, painted bootstraps on, not taped bootstraps. Um, we've done a custom paint job on the motors. We've put a new rub rail on the boat and the boat is really, really looking good but it's not quite there yet. I personally like uh, wet sanding and polishing the boat, um, buffing and polishing the boat off. The reason I do that is I really like the paint to be glass smooth. And I believe that the only way to really get it done is to wet sand and then buff and polish that boat. And that makes that clear coat really straight and look good when, when it's on the water. As I've mentioned before, Bob's done a great job at maintaining his boat. He's really meticulous. That boat is perfectly maintained. Um, however, the boat being a few years old, it's of course going to pick up a few scratches and nicks and whatever. Nate got on the job and he's been able to fix those for us. He's done a fantastic job. Thank you, Nate. The registration numbers, we realised that um, they, it was a unique font and we couldn't quite match the font, so I got an artist to recreate that font for us, and they cut new registration numbers. We've put them on the boat, it looks fantastic. So we wrapped Bob's boat up, and the boat looked awesome in the sun. It, it was glowing like a jewel. We loaded the boat on the trailer and took it down to the, the slip, and we met up on the water for a boat ride. Wow, what a nice boat. Dale assured me that that boat is going to look just like the sample I made you. I said, Dale, I'm taking your word for it. I said, you haven't misled me this far, so we're going to go ahead with it. You know, we did, and I'm happy with it, so it really worked out. Can't wait to get it back to New Jersey and get it out there among all my friends that knew my old boat. Show up a little bit, and they'll all think it's a new boat. I hadn't told many people, I'm sure of it. I mean, it was quite interesting. There were, there were definitely some people turning their heads to have a good look at the boat. We got a few thumbs up saying, nice boat and so on. So it's not like the other 100 speed blue boats out there because everything's working well on the boat. You know, the custom motors, that speed blue, it sparkles, you know, it changes color as the light and the water move around it. It's a pretty spectacular boat and 
you know, he looks after his boat really well, so the rest of the boat looks fantastic. And um, it's a good looking boat. It's one that I would be proud to own. It worked out well, and I'm happy with what was done. But in addition to that, Dale was there to help with anything I needed. You know, he helped me pull the boat out using his trailer and he kept it on his work trailer while all the work was being done. I mean, he couldn't do more for me. Anything I asked, he was right there to help. I think we went above and beyond with him. And um, at Two Rivers, it's not just about us doing the job for you. We like doing the other little things. And at the end of the day, everybody is happy and the boat looks amazing. And I'm sure it's going to blow the socks off the people in New Jersey. When we return, FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Bob Martinez aboard his fully restored 23-foot hoop in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Taco Marine. Troll the edge. Safety is paramount when boating. That's why Taco developed the Grand Slam 800 VHF antenna mount. Easily raise and lower your boat's antenna by simply unlocking the crank handle from the base and turning. It's quick, easy, and best of all, safe. No more climbing on gunnels, seats, or tops just to adjust your antenna. Find out more about the Grand Slam 800 VHF antenna mount at tacomarine.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago, and the dreams just keep getting better. An interesting phenomenon that we see a lot of lately, and it seems more so all the time, is a boat that's a classic old boat, no longer in production, that becomes kind of a cult favorite among boaters. And the harder it is to find one, the more sought after they are. A great example of this is a hoob boat. Now, hoob boats were built from 1985 into like the early 90s in their original form. And Bob Hoog started building boats and mostly were flats boats. I mean, 16, 17, 18 foot flats boats. And they were very popular in South Florida and the Keys. He also built a limited number of 23 foot center consoles. And this boat is the boat that we're gonna look at today. Robert and I were joined today by his friend, Tom. Now, both of these guys are originally from Miami, Florida. And this is where this boat had its origins. So I originally came across the Hoog boats back when I was a young kid going to Isla Mirada the, to, to the Tiki Bar. And at that marina, they, used, they were hanging up underneath like an awning and you would see the Hughes, the Hoog boats, the Mavericks and so forth and so on for the backcountry fishing. Obviously years later, I got, you know, a good friend of mine, Tom, is the one that got me familiar with the, with the offshore model, which he only built one size. They were very sought after, very hard to find. And that's when I started my research. Now Tom and Robert had done quite a bit of boating together and Tom had a lot of experience with hoop boats and just went on and on to Robert about what a great riding boat and how well built these boats were. Well, Robert being in the market for a new boat all of a sudden got it in his mind that he wanted a 23 hoop and the quest to find this boat began. We found one in Sarasota, Florida and I also found one in uh, Lake Michigan which was way too far for me to travel to even try to negotiate a price or whatever. So the guy in Sarasota, Florida actually had it for sale with the brand new engine on it and then ended up parting out the engine. And after six months of going back and forth, we ended up buying the boat. I looked at the boat as far as, you know, how solid it was. The transom was solid. I noticed that it was original gel coat, top and bottom. The bottom had never been painted. The refurbish started from there. I literally did the whole tear down here at my house. And uh, after I got it completely tear down, including the fuel tank and everything out of it, uh, I went ahead and used l &H, a couple of guys that I know over there, and they uh, did a lot of the fiberglass work for me, and, and it, was, it was somewhat rough, no structural damages. And then I had a real good friend of mine, a local painter that paints uh, mega yachts and such, actually did the last painting of the boat in uh, all grip. Now this hoog did not require any major structural work, but there was a lot to be done, mostly cosmetic work and re-rigging, rewiring, and dressing the boat up. The leaning post is new. The T-top, he had just gotten replaced prior to me buying the boat. 
Everything else as far as new wiring, uh, new hardware. We pulled the fuel tank. I had a fuel tank built here locally. Everything's been replaced with all new parts. The console actually was, it is the original console. Um, I've, I had uh, the fiberglass people fill every hole in that console, including the 50 rod holders that the guy had put in the, in the boat, and then just kept uh, the four simple ones, and I may add a few here down the road, but um, I went ahead and put uh, a pair of Garmin 7608s in it, uh, Fusion Stereo, JL Audio amps, you know, 688s, things of that nature. Um, I rebuilt the, uh, the T-Top um, electronics box, um, put a nice VHF up there. As far as the power goes, uh, I've owned many Suzuki's in my time. Uh, I've had several other boats with Suzuki motors. Um, actually, we put a two, 250 horse uh, Suzuki four stroke motor on it and um, was, was very pleased with the power. Uh, it, it does have the same weight as the 300 that he, has on, he had on there originally. So nothing as far as the uh, performance or anything uh, changed for the, for the boat itself. Now one of the things that makes a Hoog so popular, and especially this 23-footer, is the ride. This is a boat that brings the old-school fiberglass lamination techniques to play here. And this boat was a very solid, ruggedly built, heavy fiberglass boat that ran really soft and ran like a champ. And we really got to see that today. Today was a maiden voyage pretty much out the inlet in Stewart Inlet for the first time ever. We took it offshore. Fairly dry boat at this point. I still got some tweaks to do on, on raising the motor a little bit and, and some other little things that I want to do to it. Other than that, I intend to use it just for pleasure and doing a little offshore fishing, some bottom fishing. Uh, I will tell you this, I will keep this one probably longer than any other boat I've ever kept because I've, I get a lot of hard work and, uh, and sweat into it. So it's been a long road for sure. Now, Robert's no newcomer to boating. In fact, he's owned numerous boats over the course of his life, and he's even owned several boats from brand new. This was the first time he's had the opportunity to take a boat that he really wanted and customize it to his own liking. He did a great job with the boat, and he's got exactly the boat he wanted. After an initial investment of $10,000 and spending $26,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Bob's dream boat comes to a total of $36,000. When we return, Wildfire Marine makes headway on the 25-foot Mako project, starting at the Transom. This segment brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. When you're in command of a boat with Mercury 400 horsepower Verados, you might start to feel like you're someone that fish should fear that the water should respect, and that the world should acknowledge. Until you realize you are all those things. The new Mercury 400 horsepower Verado. Power, control, and speed in a lightweight package. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as Wildfire Marine begins work on the 25-foot Mako project. Yeah, we're here working on uh, Brian's 25-foot Mako. Uh, sides and, and transom are all painted, so now we're gonna go ahead and install a bracket. It's a designer series bracket, which is good for a, up to a 300 horsepower motor. One reason I use Armstrong all the time is because they custom build every bracket for the boat. I'll give Armstrong the dimensions so I can get maximum flotation on some of these boats. Uh, on some boats, it's not that critical. On other boats, it's very critical to have the extra flotation. Uh, and so Armstrong will build it right to my dimensions and we've actually lifted some transoms with some of their brackets. Uh, that's the reason why we use their brackets. Uh, the first thing we do when we do get the bracket is we have to find a true center line of the boat and determine the mounting height. Uh, easiest way to find a true center line is we go ahead and we take measurements. Uh, we scribe arcs from the, the, the corner of the chine on both sides up to the center and that finds our true center line and then we determine our height. Basically we take a straight edge off the bottom of the boat uh, determine where the, where the center of the water pickup on the, is on the motor and like I said 95% of the time that's a perfect mounting height for the bracket and the, and the motor. Once we find our center line and get our level line at the mounting height we bring the bracket up to the transom. Once it's in position we will drill two holes. We'll put two bolts in and then go in and scribe all the holes with a marker. Uh, then take the transom, the bracket off the transom 
drill all the holes, mount the bracket back on. We'll go back on the inside with the drill and just clean all the holes because occasionally the drill is going to walk a little bit going through the transom. Once we have all those holes drilled in, then we go ahead and uh, remove the bracket, put all of our 5200 on it, you know, seal it well. We put a perimeter bead all around the, the inside of the bracket. Then we put another perimeter bead on the interior part of, portion of the bracket. And then we put a bead in between each hole and surrounding each hole. Then put the bracket up to the boat and start with the same two holes that we use for our locating holes so that nothing changes. Then once the bracket is mounted, we go ahead and put a bead of caulk around the, the washers and the, the bolt itself so that when we go ahead and install the bolt, there's no possible way that any water is going to get into the transom, uh, which is one reason why the wood transom will last so long. Uh, it's important to do that because if you introduce water through all those holes, uh, there's an awful lot of water pressure. It will penetrate and you know, your transom won't last very long, no matter what it is, no matter no, what kind of material it is. Um, but it's very important to get that good seal on there. We go ahead and, and do all the bolts in the bracket, and then we'll go around two more times around the body of the bracket. But we go ahead and pull them basically, basically as, as tight as you can pull them uh, with a half-inch half inch, uh, wrench. Uh, you don't want to go anything heavier because then you end up snapping a bolt. Uh, you don't want to go any lighter because then you can't put enough torque on it. Yeah, after the bracket is completely installed, we go ahead and put a, a final bead of caulk around the entire outside perimeter of the bracket just to make sure that we have everything to totally sealed. Because of the fact that this motor was already running on the boat, he's only he's got about 20 hours on it before he found these issues. Um, it was a pretty in easy install. We just went ahead and reinstalled the motor on the bracket, reconnected all of his wiring and, and hoses. Uh, we had to lengthen a couple pieces of, of uh, fuel hose because they weren't quite long enough because we put the bracket on. Uh, other than that, it was a very straightforward in installation. While the boat was here, Brian also asked me if there was a way we could uh, change his access to his locker, anchor locker up forward. Uh, it's something we do quite a bit. The way most boats were built, they had the anchor door uh, in the forward area. Uh, you have to get, basically get down on your hands and knees to go in and get an anchor. Um, so what we do is we close that wall off and then put an anchor access hatch through the top deck. It's not, it doesn't cost very much to do something like that. And it's a whole lot easier on your back and, and, and knees and you don't have to disturb anybody that's on the front seat when you're trying to get the anchor out. As with most boats that come in here, uh, the owners added a few more items to the boat that we're going to try to get done. Um, hopefully we're going to be able to get all that stuff done before the deadline that we have for his grandfather's big party. Uh, but we'll see what happens. It depends on how much he brings. Next week on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Two Rivers Boat Works takes on repairing and customizing a 36-foot yellow fin. Wildfire Marine begins final rigging on the 25-foot Mako project. George Labonte meets the owner of a beautifully restored 261 Mako. And L&H begins restoration work on one of their own, a classic 33-foot walk around.